So when it comes to buying your first house, I tell people there's quite a few things that you want to keep in mind that you need to look into and get to be prepared to purchase your first house. Number one is pull your credit. You want to make sure your credit is clean, your credit is clear, and you can contest anything that may be negative on your credit. You may have paid off a car six months or a year ago, but it still shows up on your credit. So you want to pull your credit first thing and foremost, know your credit score. The second thing is bank statements. You need to have your bank statements ready, both checking and savings to show that you have a little bit of money in savings and a little bit of money in your checking account. Now, you don't have to have a whole lot of money, nor do you have to have a savings account, but you can at least have a checking account showing that you have stability and proof with the bank that your check from your employer is being posited into your bank account. The next thing you'll need is to make a list of anything that you pay on a monthly basis. Now, it's not really talking about cell phone bills or electric bills or anything like that. It's really called consumer debt. So what are you paying as far as on a car note, a student loan, a hospital bill, credit card payments? They want to see minimum payments when you go to a bank or a mortgage company to get approved for a loan. They want to see what are you actually having to pay minimum payments each month. The next thing they're going to want to see is tax returns. They want to see proof that you have in fact have a job, made money, paid your taxes, and then that is the pinnacle of showing them what you actually earn on a yearly basis. Pay stubs. They're going to want to see pay stubs. They're going to want to see proof that you're actually working, you have a job, you're paying your taxes, and then you have pay stubs. So they typically want to see two months of your pay stubs. And then they'll verify your employment. So they're going to pull your credit. They're going to verify your employment. They're going to look at your bank statements. They're going to look at what you have going out, what's going in. And then at that point, they're going to say, okay, based on this much money you have left over at the end of the month, this is how much you can afford to pay. And that magic number is typically around 30 to 31% of what they call your adjusted gross income. So you take what you're making income wise, subtract what you're paying out each month. And then from there, they'll loan you 31% of that towards a monthly mortgage payment. Now, if you have a 620 or higher credit score, you can get approved. You can purchase a home pretty much anywhere in the United States through a rural development program. I've talked about that a lot. And through the rural development program, it cost you no money out of pocket. It's 100% loan. A good qualified agent will get the sellers to pay your closing cost. And at that point, it costs you literally no money to purchase a house. Now, once the bank tells you or the mortgage company tells you you're approved, you're ready to go because they'll look at what you can actually pay on a monthly basis. They're going to look at what your interest rate will be. And then based on the rate and the monthly payment, they're going to cross that and say, okay, well, well, based on what you have coming in, what you have going out, you can pay this much a month. And based on the interest rate, currently that would cost you X, you can afford to purchase this much home. And it may be 200,000, 300,000. Oftentimes it's more than what you want to pay. So it's a good idea to tell your mortgage lender, hey, this is what I'm comfortable paying right now. And then from there, you have to know that, okay, well, if I'm comfortable paying 13, but I can't find what I'm looking for on the market, perhaps I can go up a little bit. And they may approve you for $1,600 or $2,200 a month mortgage payment. But at that point, you have to Look at what's comfortable. I always tell folks, when you buy your first home or any home for that matter, you don't want to be house poor. You don't want to be so strapped to that home that it's hard to do anything other than just work in the grind. It's like you really enjoy things and you want to get it so bad, but the last thing you want to do is purchase something and it's just, it becomes a burden. Now, once you're approved, it's just a matter of getting out there and looking at property. But what you'll want to do is you'll want to interview agents. And I always tell people, talk with an agent, get referrals from other people, get referrals from perhaps somebody that you know, a friend, a family family member, a co-worker. Listen, most importantly, make sure you've got somebody that has years in the business, that's experienced in the business, that has the transaction knowledge and experience. Unfortunately, it doesn't take much but about 30 days to get a real estate license. And at that point, consumers are at the mercy of the agent and their knowledge into the transactions based on past experience. You'll want to look at those Google reviews and you'll really want to pay attention to what other people are telling you and referring you because it doesn't cost you any money to have an agent. The agents are paid by the listing company. So when a house is listed, that listing company is paying your agent. So when you hire an agent, that agent is working for you and they're compensated by the seller's brokerage company. And once you've got that out of the way, you've hired an agent, you're approved and ready to go. At that point, you can start looking at houses in a very serious state because you're like a cash buyer. You have an approval letter in your hand that the lender will give you. So once you find a house that you really like, you can make an offer to purchase that home. Once you write a contract on that home, then it's a matter of presenting the contract with the approval letter to show the seller that I am a, I'm like a cash buyer. I can purchase 
foreclosure house have already been approved. The bank said, I just need to find a house in this price range and your house fits in this price range. After the offer is made, the seller will either accept your offer or they'll submit a counter offer. I can promise you, unless you submit a full price offer, almost all sellers are gonna counter offer because they're listening to the counsel of their agent. So always make an offer that's comfortable, that you're comfortable with paying. And I always tell people, you truly don't know the seller's motivation. So it's okay to make an offer, but you don't wanna make such a low offer that it offends that person and they don't counter offer at all. Now keep in mind, you may bat it back and forth, meaning that you make an offer, they counter offer, you counter back, they accept your counter. And at that point, you've got a fully ratified contract. That contract is legally binding at that point. And then from there, you're gonna do your home inspection. That's the next thing. You typically have 10 to 14 days to do a home inspection. Once again, choose a home inspector as though you're choosing your agent. Look at the Google reviews, take some referrals from your agents. Real estate agents aren't supposed to just refer you to one person when it comes to any entity in our industry. They're supposed to give you a minimum of three that you can choose from. And once again, you'll wanna look at how many years have you been doing it, Mr. Inspector, Miss Inspector? What are your credentials? What did you do before? How many Google reviews do you have? Make sure that that person has the knowledge and the wherewithal to do a good job for you because they're going to cost you about three to five hundred dollars depending on the size of the home and they're absolutely going to pick that house apart they're going to give you a list of every single thing that potentially is wrong or could go wrong with that house. Now, after you get the report back, what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna look at the summary page. The summary page, those are the items that the home inspector feels that are in dire need or should be addressed by the seller prior to closing. And oftentimes those are the items that you're gonna to wanna to tell your agent, hey, I still wanna buy the house, but I need these, these items to be fixed. And a lot of those items are leaky faucets, leaky commodes, broken window seals where the windows are fogged over, a cracked window, central heat and air needed to be serviced. Most home inspectors will put that on there that they recommend the central heat and air unit to be serviced by a licensed contractor. So after you've got the house under contract, you've done your inspection, at that point you bat it back and forth between you the buyer and the seller of the property. Once all parties agree, your agent will get you to sign the agreement, the seller to sign the agreement showing that both parties agree and it's in writing. Never, if it doesn't happen in writing, it doesn't happen. It has to be in writing. So once it's in writing, you know at that point, I've submitted an offer to purchase on the property. I've given them a little bit of a deposit for the property of which is that deposit check is cashed and you can get that money back. Lord forbid you decide you don't want to buy the property or there's something detrimentally wrong. Now, if you do buy the property, your deposit that you've put down on the property will go towards your down payment. Now that all the inspection is worked out, your agent will notify your lender and tell the lender the inspection's been done, everything's clarified, we're good to go. At that point, the lender will order the appraisal on the property the appraiser will come out the appraiser will look at three comparable properties as closest to the subject property that you're looking to purchase and they'll give it a value. Most of the time they look at the copy of the contract and they look at working to meet the value on the contract. 96% of the time they're going to appraise the property for right there on the button what you're purchasing it for. Mostly because real estate agents do their job and they do their due diligence and they sit with homeowners and they come up with a price that everyone feels is fair and then the real estate appraiser is going to work to determine that value based on those same comparable properties that they looked at. Now once the property is appraised, they'll notify the lender, they'll send a copy of the appraisal report to the lender, and then they'll forward you a copy of that. Make sure you always get a copy of your appraisal report. You pay for it, they're around $400, four to $450, so make sure you get a copy of that. And from there, it's kind of like back office work. The mortgage lender are going to do their thing through underwriting and making sure everything's legit. They will pull your credit two to three days before, so whatever you do, don't go spend on any money, don't spend any cash, don't spend any money, don't put anything on credit. I've seen it happen too many times a week or two before closing and then they get denied the loan. They can't purchase the property. And the other behind the scenes is your agent's gonna get a copy of that contract to the title company or the closing attorney. The closing attorney is gonna pull and do their due diligence to make sure the property has one or two or three mortgages or none at all and to make sure there's no back taxes, liens, encumbrances or anything on the property. That way when you take possession of the property, you take deed to the property, you've got a clear deed, you've got a clear title, the mortgage company's gonna give you a mortgage on the property, which is basically saying, look, you're gonna give me money to purchase the property and I'm going to secure 
that money with this house that I'm purchasing. And from there, you show up at closing. You'll get a closing date and a closing time from your agent. The seller will meet you there. The buyer will meet you there. It all is done in the same day. Once you meet there and you close, the money from your mortgage company is being wired to the title company. The title company then wires the money to pay off the seller's mortgage. And at that point, on that day, you get the keys to your property and let's negotiate it otherwise. But you want to make sure you've got a good person that's working for you on your behalf. It's representing your interest in the purchase of the property. Most importantly, they just have the experience and the knowledge to show you where and when and how and what and how everything is done as simply as possible. So hope you've enjoyed the video. Let us know how we can help. There's a bunch more videos that you can watch that may help you in the pursuit of purchasing your next home.